Hi, this is Rick. Today I've got an interesting little test. I'm going to compare Meta AI's coding abilities with Gemini AI and Copilot from Windows 11. Coding request is going to be uh, using Armor 3, a military simulator's own built in language. I'm going to compare the outputs and see how these different AI systems compare with each other. Okay, so I'm going to start with Meta AI. I have uh, written out a simple task. It's actually not that simple to solve this problem, but I'm going to see how they handle it. And the whole point is that in order to solve this problem, you really have to have a, an in-depth understanding of the SQF scripting language for Armor 3, and also a little bit of knowledge about gaming. So let's see what happens. So this is my little request. Write a script for Armor 3 that blows a unit backwards off his feet and injures the unit slightly when he walks too closely to the back of any plane. The script should use a scripted trigger attached to the back of the planes to accomplish this script objective. So let's see what it does. Very quick. Script to blow unit backwards and inch it slightly when too close to oops, scroll this when too close to the plane. Define the trigger. Trigger plane back. Okay, trigger, empty detector, trigger area. It's too square. One would assume that the, the trigger area should be comparatively narrow and long behind the plane. Uh, this is just giving it a X and Y five meters square or block behind the engine uh, and at zero altitude, which is fine since it's a trigger, it will be vertical. Um, the trigger activation will be player present. Trigger statements will be player distance plane. And in this instance, it's using position plane for the trigger. So it's assuming somehow that the pl that a plane, a specific plane, has been named plane, and also this is not specific. This is specific to players. I I said it should be blows a unit, the unit meaning players or AI units. So it's for some reason must have scraped us from somewhere, and it's combining the use of the word unit and, and and assuming that that means only players it's also getting some variable plane effect i have no idea where that's supposed to come from so clearly this is not it doesn't really understand what it's doing it's just grabbing bits of information that it's found somewhere on the internet and uh it's kind of trying to piece it together. I mean, the, the fact that it's actually creating a trigger, that's a, good, that's a good sign. The fact that I have to name the plane, I want this to be generic so that it would attach the trigger to any plane. It's asking a lot because it's a complex, it's a complex process. But we'll just see. I mean, so far it's done pretty well. Then it sets a variable plane effect. In this instance, it's referencing a variable that's not defined and there is no default definition of the variable so it's going to throw an error anyway apart from everything else so now it decides to set the variable in this instance is giving it a negative vertical velocity of five meters per second it's it's that's the only thing it's doing in fact it's it's trying to force him into the ground essentially it shows that it didn't really understand the query because the query is I want the jet blast to blow the player or unit backwards off his feet, meaning that he should have a vertical velocity and, a, and, a, and an inverse velocity to the plane direction. Because obviously the jet engine is facing the opposite direction to the plane's direction. And then it takes the unit, it adds 0.1 damage to the unit, which is fair enough, because that's what I asked it to do, give it a small amount of damage. The problem with this is it's actually going to set the unit's position five meters forward from its current position. So the, the unit's going to actually move closer to the plane. Direction is unit get direction plane. 
Yeah, so it's actually going to move, the, it's going to be five meters ahead of the unit. So the unit is actually going to, instead of being blown backwards, it's going to be blown into the plane. Then it looks for all the planes in the mission and puts them into local variable. It's sort of trying to call a function, but this isn't a function. So this is really weird. But it's actually tried, which is, which is not bad. Sometimes we get very interesting results from Gemini. Okay, so it's followed my instructions, or it says it has. This script utilizes a trigger attached to the back of all planes to push the injured units who gets to push and injure the units who get too close. Armor three. Adam, advanced dynamic attribute menu, not strictly necessary, but allows for easier tweaking of values in game. Define the trigger radius. I would constant radius two. Define the force multiplier strength to push. I would constant force multiplier five thousand. Define the damage to apply minimal injury. Private constant damage 0 .00, 0 0.001, which is very small. I barely even notice that. It would be like cutting your finger very superficially. Function to activate the trigger effect. Public variable trigger area. Trigger area, this select zero. Void activate trigger object target. Press play a target. It's no target default. Wow, it just fabricates functions and fabricates language commands. It's not even using the correct command syntax. I actually can't even comment. I feel like I'm in the twilight zone here. Add event handler to trigger activation. Add event handler. I wonder if it's been smoking its socks. There's definitely something like really weird going on here. It's like someone's thrown in code snippets into a pot and stir them from multiple different languages and then gave it a teaspoon took out a little bit and just threw them on the on a plate like i can't even comment it's just absolute nonsense it doesn't even seem to understand some of the most fundamental requirements of my request so it gets kind of a zero out of ten for that and I'd say Meta so far probably is doing by far the best. Let's have a look at Copilot Turbo from Windows 11. So we'll give it the same same request. Okay, let's have a look. Script to blowback unit cause slight injury when too close to the back of any plane. Okay, define the trigger area. Trigger distance is five meters from the back of the plane. The damage amount is 0.2, which is 20% damage. So that's a little bit more realistic in terms of the amount of damage it would do. Attach jet blast trigger. So it creates an inline function, passes the plane to this function, and then it creates a trigger, an empty detector, get pons plane, very good. Sets the trigger area to, I think it would be a little bit narrower and longer than 10 by 10, but anyway, that's not that's splitting hairs. So trigger activation, any plan, yeah, that should read any player present. And then set trigger statements. This this distance pulls out plane. So all that is plane trigger distance. Okay. Uh, player set velocity. So this sets this is correct. It sets a minus ten velocity. So it's going to push it back. And then player set damage. Whatever the uh, damage increment was, which was point zero two. And then it attaches the trigger to all the planes currently on the map. Air class config, CFG type of airplane, then X 
overall, I'd say that's pretty good. It would need some tweaking, but all in all, that's definitely the best so far. So a Copilot, which is using GPT-4 Turbo, by far the best. Gemini was a, a distant third. Meta, Meta was pretty good. It's a, it was a reasonably good attempt. Okay, so this is what the script should have looked like. This is a, a fully functional jet blast function. The trigger that is created by this function is run every time a plane lands on the carrier. It passes the plane to the function, then checks to see whether this script is, or this function is running on the server. If not, uh, if it is, then this, this function will run. If not, it will exit. It checks to see whether the plane is alive in other words, it hasn't been destroyed, and whether or not this plane has had the trigger added to the back of it. It sets a variable on the plane. So it first looks for a rear position from the plane. Uh, in this instance, the X, Y, and Z coordinates are model to world. It takes the object model space, 14 meters behind the center position of the plane, and then maps that to the real world X, Y, and Z coordinates. So what we have with the rear position is we have a real world position behind the plane exactly 40 meters from the center position to the back. It then also checks to see whether or not the plane, the type of plane happens to be a UCAB Sentinel, which is a drone. And if it is because the drone is, a, is quite a bit shorter, it reduces the, the rear offset for the rear pose by one meter, so it drops it back to 30 meters. And it creates a trigger, creates it at the position rear pose. It's an empty detector, and then it sets a trigger activation, any player present, meaning any player that's present in the trigger will activate this trigger. And then it sets a trigger area. It's, those are the radiuses. So um, the actual total width will be eight, and the, um, the, the total length will be uh, 12.4. So that trigger is, is essentially a rectangular trigger that's positioned directly on top of the rear pose, which is at the back of the plane, as mentioned. So then it creates some trigger statements, and this is what's going to happen when the person walks into the trigger. Uh, it does this for each, for each in the list. This list means the people that are in the trigger, the people who satisfy the condition of the trigger. Uh, in other words, any player. So if two, a couple of players walk into the walk behind a plane, both of them will, will be processed by this trigger statement. So the first thing will happen is their screen will shake a little bit because they're being hit by a jet blast. And then the magic variable, which is each element of this list array, will run a, a play move now, which will force this animation to run on, on each of the units. And unfortunately, there's no direct animation that uh, shows a jet blast effect. So the best one I could find was it starts, the guy starts running and then he gets lifted off his feet and then he eventually drifts up into the air and falls down on his face, hands down uh, on, on, the, on the tarmac or on the deck of a carrier. And it uses remote ex execution because the individual elements in this array will be uh, local to different machines. And so in order to make sure that everyone on the network sees the animation played on that character, it remote executes this to all of the clients on the network. What it does then is it, is, as this animation is starting to take place, it sets the position of this element, the player, it moves him back by half a meter and lifts him off the ground by, by a tenth of a meter. So he is currently moving backwards and he's up off the ground. And then it sets the velocity using sign direction uh, of the unit, minus 11, uh, times minus 11 in both cases. So he'll move backwards from his current position with a, an acceleration or velocity of 11 meters per second and 9 meter vertical velocity. Then it sets damage on the unit, uh, 0.1 or 10% plus a random 0.3. So maximum of 40% damage to the unit. Uh, varying minimum damage of 0.1. After that, the trigger will then will deactivate if the plane is speed of the plane is 10 kilometers now. Now the trigger is attached to the rear position as I mentioned, so it'll wait until it's 
the plane is either not touching the ground, in other words, it's taken off, or the engine is switched off, in which case it'll, the trigger must be removed, or the driver's got out of the plane, or the plane's not alive, and then it will detach the trigger and delete the trigger. So each time the plane lands, he gets the trigger added to the plane. Anyone standing behind it when the engine is on, the guy will get blown off his feet and, and so on. And then what it does is it sets a variable on the, on the plane saying blast trigger added. So that, and it's set to true. So this routine, which runs repeatedly, won't continually add triggers back to a plane that already has the trigger added. And essentially that's how it works. So I'm going to post a link now to the Ross Carrier Deck version 2 system. And you can see, as I said, about six minutes in, you can see this little script running. It's just, it's really for fun more than anything else. But uh, it's still a little bit more realistic than just being able to walk behind a plane while its, its main thrusters are on and, and not have any effect on the player. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this content and are new to this channel, make sure you click on the subscribe button and the bell next to it so you can get notified when we release new content. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.